hi guys welcome back to my youtube channel if this is your first time here thank you so much for stopping by my name is ayomidi and i am the voice behind this channel i rarely show my face but i want to be showing my face more often now so this is the face behind this channel thank you so much for stopping by and to all my returning subscribers and viewers you guys are the best thank you so much for the support for watching every content that I post on this channel. This tutorial I'm sharing today is a very special one simply because it's a detailed tutorial of the birthday gift I made for myself. It's a jumpsuit that I made for myself even though I didn't get to do a photo shoot with this jumpsuit before my birthday because I had a lot of things to do. Just in case you haven't subscribed to the channel, please click on the subscribe button below, join the crew join the sewing community and let's jump straight into this tutorial the materials i'm going to be working with i have this lace here it's called chantilly lace i also have my white crepe it's quite stretchy it's quite stretchy so i'm going to be making a white jumpsuit and we're going to be using this lace with it too my pattern here what i've done so far is just to draft my basic bodice pattern i have my front and i have the back here if you don't know how to do this i have a detailed tutorial on my youtube channel on how you can do this so that's why i didn't go through the process of repeating this again since i already have a tutorial on this before i proceed with any alteration let me complete let us complete the back bodies I'm going to be taking my waist measurements. A cut of my waist is 6.25, and I'm going to be adding one inch for that. So I'm go still going to be putting in that here. So that's 7.25. Taking the midpoint of this measurement, I'm going to be marking my dad's allowance. This jumpsuit is going to be having a yoke and I want the lace to be the yoke in the front. So I'm going to be drawing out the pattern of the yoke, going, marking 2.5 inches above the chest line, which is here. I will draw a curve to my bust line. marked this out already so this part is going to be my look another alteration i would make would be to the neck width and the neck depth i want my neck width to be four inches and not three inches remember this is a basic bodice that's why i'm doing all of these alterations and the neck depth i want it to be four inches likewise oh i'm going for three and a half inch I no longer need this. I will do likewise for the back. I want the bust area to have some firmness. So I'm going to be marking my under bust measurement, which is 12 inches. On this side of my dart, I'm going to be taking half an inch away from my dart leg. This is my dart leg. Ignore this line. So from this dart leg, I'm going to be marking half an inch. And that's all I'm going to be connecting. The next thing, I will get the midpoint of my shoulder slant. I will then connect it to my boss point. I'm going to be taking half an inch on both sides. Because I'm going to be taking one inch out of here, I would compensate for that. I would extend this. And I'm doing this so that when I'm joining the yoke to my to the other part of my panel, it would match up. So I will mark the exam measurements I'm taking out, which is one inch. And I'm going to be redrawing my arm. Over. I'll just blend it. I have my center front, side front, and I have my yoke right here. For the front of my yoke, I want to have 
a part of the white fabric. It's not going to be a collar, but a part of it in the as part in along the neckline. So that's going to be about 1.2 inch. I'm going to make it one inch. One inch, one inch. I'm done marking it out now this remember my neckline is starting from here not here let me take this out so we don't get confused this is my actual neckline this one inch here is going to be my main fabric and not the lace so it's going to serve as more like it's not a collar anyways but i want my main fabric to start up and the lace then the main fabric also you know that kind of thing this here is going to be cut on the bias yes and i'm also cutting on fold this here is my yoke the lace i'm also cutting on fold one piece Going over to the back my lace yoke at the back is going to be bigger than the front you know for the front i started from my armhole area but for the back i'm going to be marking one inch downward from my armhole area which is here and i'm going to be drawing it downward uh it's looking a little bit quite low so i'm going to make in this i'll make this half inch half inch downward and i'm going to be i'll just mark it to my center back so from here i would connect with a straight v down here This part also is no longer needed. I'm shading all of this so that we can know the parts that we are working with and the parts that we are not working with. This part right here is not needed. I don't need it. This entire part all the way down here is going to be my yoke. I'm cutting two pieces and it's going to be the lace. I think I'm done with the back too. I have my center back here. I always like to indicate my zipper because when I split this, I'm going to be splitting this into two. They look somewhat alike. I have my center back here and I have my side back here. I'm cutting two pieces and I'm also cutting two pieces. So we can go ahead and cut all of our pattern pieces together. I'm going to be adding my seam allowance on the fabric i'm done cutting all of the pattern pieces that we're going to be working with but before i show them to you i want to show us something very important remember we, this is the front side front center front and we have a yoke sorry we had a dart here so i kept this dart here because i wanted to show us something this was the dart i took away from this upper part here and i compensated for it here around the arm hole. So this dart is out. Now, when you're joining your fabric, you will realize that when you join, your center front will be short of fabric as a result of this dart that we took out. Now we need to find a way around that. And how do you do that? I'm going to be fixing an extra paper to my center front here. This is my center front. Because if you don't do this, when you join your fabric eventually, you can see this is the boss line, boss line, chest line, chest line. When they meet up, you're going to be short of fabric. I'm going to be adding an extra paper here. I'll fix this. Once that is done, I would make bring the patterns together in such a way that the bust line are matching up, the chest line are matching up. So I'll just do it this way. I will use my finger to hold this down. Then following this, I'm going to be 
this is my side front so following this i'm going to be doing this this way i'll just freestyle it and then create my curve so this here will not be the new curve so i will also trace this downward you can see the amount of fabric that you are going to be losing as a result of the darts when i bring these two together they should match up perfectly can you see it's perfect they matched up perfectly and then my yoke can comfortably come here you can see can you see so i just thought to show us that i've cut out all the pattern pieces that we need and i'm going to be taking us through each of them i have my center front here fabric lining for the upper part of the jumpsuit, I'm going to be using a lining. So I got this lining, it's very light that I'm going to be using. So this is the center front, side front, fabric, lining, and the other fabric that is needed. This is the front yoke. Remember, we have a yoke for the front, front yoke, cut on fold. And then this is that part of the front that I cut out. That I'm going to be fixing to the yoke. So I wanted, I don't want my jumpsuit to start with the lace. I want a fabric lace, then the main fabric. So, so this is it. I have the back yoke. I have the center back likewise and the side back too. So main fabric and also lining. Lining, main fabric, likewise for the side back. I have the lining and the main fabric. I have my trouser here. Now, before you go ahead and start saying, but I am really didn't take us through how you cut this. That's because I have a detailed tutorial on this channel on how to draft and cut and even sew a trouser. And if you haven't seen it, this is a cue for you to go and see it. So to move on with the joining center front, I'm joining together with the side front with the seam allowance that I added. These are my back pattern pieces. So I'm going to be joining the center back to the side back. I'll also repeat likewise for this other part also. And also this is my yoke, which I'm also going to be joining to this area of my center back. I'll repeat the same also for the lining. I'm done stitching everything together. This is the front, the lining for the front, the back. In addition to stitching my back panels, I also fixed the yoke. And this is the second part of the back and the lining for the back. Before fixing the yoke to the front, I want to sort out the neckline area. This is the part I cut out from the neckline. I also ironed it interfacing. So I'm placing the fabric and the line against each other, and then I'm going to be sewing it around the neckline to secure it. This is the part I'm going to be attaching to the yoke. So it's going to be something like this. I'm just going over to sew this down. Once I sew it down, then I'll fix it to the neckline of the yoke. I'm done turning it. I also use aiming glue in between just to keep it firm and in place. This is the wrong side. This is the right side. I'm going to be fixing this now to this mesh. This is the midpoint of this piece and this is the midpoint of the yoke. I'll match up the midpoint first of all. Right side facing each other. Then I'll try and pin it all around. I'll go over and sew this down. Once I'm done sewing it down, I will now fix it to my neckline. Okay, I'm done fixing it. This is what it looks like. Later on, I will use needle and thread to tack this down in place and make it appear more neat. The next thing will be to fix this yoke to this. And in order to do that, I'm going to be notching this part that will go to the center front a little bit. Notch it a little bit, can you see? Place right sides against each other. I'll pin this part of the notch down. 
Then I will sew from here all the way down here and sew from here all the way down here. I fixed it to the main bodies already and this is what we have. I'm loving this outcome. I just tried to pin it to my body form just to have an idea of how it's going to look like. I also pinned a part of the back. So this is what the back also looks like. Can't wait. What I'll go ahead and do next is to use the lining on it. So I'm going to be using the lining to finish off these raw edges. And I'll do likewise for the back too. Guys, I'm done joining with my lining. This is my back panel pieces. And this is what my front look like. Now moving over to the trouser, the very first thing I will do would be to pick my darts on the trouser. So I'm going to be picking my darts on the four panel pieces of my trouser and once that is done i'm going to be joining the front trouser piece to the front bodice and the back trouser piece to the back bodice i'm done joining the upper bodice to the trouser part this is the back and this is my yoke here the next thing would be to place right sides the front and the back against each other and then i'm going to be sewing it all the way down by the sides and also around the crotch area too i will also go ahead and join my shoulder my shoulders together after which we will now come and walk on the sleeve so i'm going to be using my seam allowance to join the parts together moving on to the sleeve this is my sleeve pattern and it is a long sleeve i have a detailed tutorial on my channel on how to draft a basic sleeve pattern so this is a basic sleeve the sleeve is going to be having a flare at the m and i've gone ahead to fold my fabric into four the first thing i would mark right from this edge is the radius of my round sleeve and to do that you would need to divide your round second sleeve circumference by 6.28 whatever you have you would have to mark it down afterwards from that radius i'm going to be marking my length and also factoring in my seam allowance and i'm going for 6.5 inch once that is all done i would go ahead and cut this out after cutting it out i'm also going to be duplicating this sleeve because i need one for the left and one for the right and also cut out a lining for the sleeve also i'm done cutting out and i've interfaced both the main fabric and the lining for the sleeve and to go on i'm going to be placing right sides of the lining against the right sides of one sleeve right sides against each other i'll then go ahead and sew it along the m and this is the result of what i have later on this is what it looks like this is what i have the next thing i will do is to also place right sides against each other in such a way that main fabric faces main fabric and lining faces lining this helps to finish off your sleeve neatly so once i pin it down i would go ahead and sew this down and this would hide your seam allowance inside the sleeve moving on i'm going to be picking my sleeve and then i would sew it down by my seam allowance once that is done i will pick one flare that i've worked on and then looking picking up the side seam i'm going to be matching it up to the side seam of my main sleeve pattern so you want to make sure that the side seam of the flare and the side seam of your sleeve matches up and then i'm going to be pinning it all around if i have any excess at this point i'm going to be pleating it so you want to make sure you pin it all around first of all before going ahead to sew this down it makes your work easier on the sewing machine i'm done working on my both sleeves and this is the outcome of the sleeve the next step would be to join this to the main jumpsuit itself so you would want to make sure that the side seam of the sleeve matches up with the side seam of the jumpsuit this is the outcome of the jumpsuit after fixing 
the sleeve on it since it's what it looks like if you found this tutorial helpful kindly give it a thumbs up if you haven't subscribed to the channel please do click on the subscribe button below also turn on your notification for more videos and until my next video guys make sure you have a wonderful day have a blessed day and stay safe